I'm Martin Betham and you're watching Once a Warrior. Now, I don't think anyone's had as big an impact as this man over a short two-year stint. 44 games for the Warriors. Uh, still a fan favourite and also a club ambassador. Kevin Campion, thanks for joining me, man. Mate, my pleasure. Mont, it's great to be here. Thanks. Brother, what are you up to these days and where are you living? Mate, I'm on the Gold Coast. I've uh, been uh, residing there for the last 10 years. Um, and mate, I, I've got a commercial cleaning business and a commercial waterproofing business. So yeah, it keeps me busy. Okay, Campo, let's take a look back at some of the great memories you gave us. Here's Campion. He gets in behind them. Campion. Campion away from a missed tackle. Down inside the 20 metre line. Oh, big hit on seven receiver. And oh, he's done. Goes inside, but he's and that is a, a crushing tackle by Campion. Yeah, Campion's a man. Terrific ball, Campion on the spin, on the merry-go-round. And he's manhandled there, Campion leading the charge. Goes to Campion, little kicking behind the line, picked up by Campion, he's over. Campo, uh, you watch that back, mate. There was nothing you couldn't do. Uh, how does it make you feel? Mate, I, I, I always get emotional when I watch um, my time at the Warriors. It was spe uh, you know, such a special time. Uh, the two years that I had here, uh, we had great success. Uh, it was a, I guess it was a fledgling club um, looking for success and you know, I, I, I basically turned up at the right time. Um, so I was blessed. I think it was meant to be, Campo. Let's go back to the start because you were meant to be a Warrington Wolf, not a Warrior. You're over there getting a little bit cold uh, and you decided this wasn't for you. Talk, talk to me about it. No, that's correct. I um, had the opportunity to represent uh, Ireland in the 2000 World Cup. I had just finished my stint with the Broncos, Brisbane Broncos. We won the Premiership in 2000. Uh, so I'd signed over in Warrington. Um, Alfie Langer was there, Andrew G with it, was there. And they were two of my great mates when I was uh, playing at the Broncos. So they convinced me to uh, sign over there. While I was there playing for Ireland, it was the worst... <laughs> It was the worst weather in 400 years. Yeah. And um, my young fella, uh, Austin, who was only a baby, um, he was born in 98, two years old, we'd spent a lot of time in hospital with him mm. in Brisbane, um, suffering from croup, and we decided um, that um, the English weather wasn't, um, you know, going to be good on him. So we decided to pull the pin because of family reasons, and um, luckily enough, um, the opportunity came up to sign with the Warriors. I mean, what was your perception of the club then? I mean, you were like, oh, I don't want to be cold, so I'm going to go to that club. Or did you feel like there was some ability? It was something that I um, I could see myself, you know, building a, a great club. I, I, just the talent that I recognised that we had there at that um, at that time, that I, you know, I think that it was mm. the right time. We had some great um, Aussie um, players here. I, Ivan Clear, we struck up a great friendship um, straight away. My my wife and her, and his wife, um, mm. struck up a great friendship um, to this day as well. So, it was a it was a really smooth transi transition. You know, I, I loved I loved being here, and the people were just fantastic. You know, the support we had here were were true and um, and. You know, to this day, uh, I'm more recognised um, from a New Zealand perspective than I am from an Aussie perspective. Yeah. yeah. You have earliest memories of the club, or turning up, or training, or, or, or the players. Well, what I first saw when I first got here, there was a lot of lazy trainers, and, and no one wanted to put in, a, you know, too much effort to, you know, mm. to get to that. And, and I was from a club where um, the Brisbane Broncos, you know, everything was on effort, on effort, on effort. Um, everyone trained hard. Um, you know, we and we played hard and we we enjoyed our time when we won so that's what that's the sort of thing I wanted to bring here and what I I did see that um, you know that there was guys here cutting corners and mm. and uh, and that was one of the things that I, I really uh, took upon myself to sort of change um, because I was very structured you know I was you know I was really hard-nosed um, in the way I, I sort of um, approached rugby league and when I got here it was very difficult for me to um, adjust to to how how the boys are um, um, sort of reacted. So, got to training, you know, the boys would um, be walking in in flip flops, and the music would be pumping, and the boys would be dancing, and it just you know it grew on me over the two year period I was here. It was just and I loved. It. We do pool sessions, and uh, it was like just funny, you know, you know the old um, the old the old um, training facility across the road at Beasley Avenue there. 
um, look, we didn't we didn't have the great facilities that what what the club has today yeah. in place. So, you know, there was a plunge pool there that was, you know, I, I don't think it had ever been cleaned. Um, not from what I saw anyway, because the, the water was murky and muddy and and, and um, no one wanted to get in that water. But I remember we were doing, um, and we had to make make do for a, a lot of things that we, we had at that time. And for an ice bath, we used to grab, get these big blocks of ice and throw them in this dirty That's pool right. and, right. and then go and, you know, submerge yourself in, in this rotten pool and it stunk, you know, it was, it was filthy. I mean, you, you said that cutting corners was one thing. Uh, what, what else do you think needed to be changed back then? Because it obviously changed. I, I think it was a, a, a lot to do with our um, physicality, um, one yeah. thing, our mental uh, approach to the games. Um, we, we, we wanted to win games too quickly. Um, that's, that's how I, I saw it. We didn't want to do the hard stuff to, to actually get into the grind. And um, once we, once we got that, um, we were a better uh, rugby league side for it. You know, we we could battle it out with the best in the business, and um, we were we were a, a tough rugby league side with a lot of flair. You know, and we could once we once we got over the top of teams, you know, we could we could put fifty on them very easily mm. in a in a matter of you know a twenty minute period. So, but it was the back end of the game. It wasn't the you know front end yeah, of the game. Yeah. It was the back end. We had to work, you know, work hard for that that right to put those um, 50 points on. But once we once we got it mentally, we um, mm. we got it. You know, we made the um, semis in in 2001 for the first time. We drew with Melbourne in Melbourne to make the final. Uh, do you remember what else happened that night in the particular scrum? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Was that leadership was okay back then? What happened? You loved yeah, it. But... You loved it. Oh, the, you know. Now I'll tell you what happened, Rodney Howe. So he he got me with a real cheap shot, yeah, and uh, and hurt me, and and I said to him, you you, you weak so yeah. and so, and and I remember um, you you're obviously playing hooker and you're packing in the in, at uh, hooker, and I, I, I just had enough. My you know the fuse was lit, it was in the back of my mind. And I'm just going, you mongrel. Anyway. So I've grabbed you, I said, Mont, you go back to the back of the scrum. And um, You should have just moved me to the side. I could have helped you. Well, it was easy. You didn't need my help. No. So I I, I did I, I hit him with a great uppercut in the scrum. And you could see it on the <laughs> you could see it on the footage. You could see well, I was back of the scrum and you could see his head lift up. And then he started whinging to the referee. But um, Yeah, it was uh, he deserved it, hundred mm, percent. Mm. And um, yeah, sometimes, you know, guys deserve that. Yeah. If you look back at some of the relationships you've had then with yeah. the Shantane Huppies, um, uh, the Henry Farfillies, the Francis Mellies, uh, uh, how, how did you enjoy those moments? Because it was different for you having to learn to converse with uh, uh, the Kiwi boy or the yeah. Polynesian boy. Funny, and I've only just sort of recently um, reconnected with um, Shantane Huppie. And uh, I remember Shantane, and Shantane went up for a... Um, a catch and came down and broke his broke his leg, and um, and I was just thinking, that, you know, this kid's just having, a, you know, he's pulling, the, you know, pulling the wool over our eyes, and uh, so I've walked out to him, and he's laying on the ground, and uh, Shawnee and I had a bit of a laugh the last, you know, 2019 when we came over for the 25 year reunion, um, that I actually came up to him, and I said to him, he's laying on the ground in pain, and I'm thinking, get up. I said, get up. <laughs> I said, get up. Get up. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> anyway, he's been stretched off the field with a compound <laughs> fracture of his leg. <laughs> oh, uh, so um, the younger players coming through respected all the senior players, which was a, made it, you know, made it easier. You know, I was very hard, yes, but you know, they everyone knew their place in the, in that mm. side. Um, you know, they they knew. When they got to that, there was a standard to be set, and they had to up, uh, um, live up to that standard. And um, we, you know, we set a scene. And I remember, um, you know, I was a 32-year-old man, and you were a 22-year-old man, you know, and um, and you pushed me, you know, and, I, and it made it fun for me, you know. I remember doing beep tests with you, you know, and uh, you, you and I would be the last two in the beep test. I knew I wouldn't beat you, but you know, I'd push myself just to make sure that you knew. 
I was um, yeah, yeah. I was up there. You know, I'm still ready to go. It's interesting that too, man, because I think about the impact you made and the impact you made on my career early on too, with you know getting the rings out, talking to me, um, saying the right things to me, but just enough just to get me engaged or to wanting a, a little bit more as well. Mm. Um, did, did you have that in mind? Did you did you think about trying to uh, you know, uh, target uh, certain people. I mean, how, how do you, how did you try and start to build that culture? Because I, I think that's what you were doing without us even knowing when we look back in hindsight. Yeah, I mean, I picked, you know, I picked a few. You know, you were a leader, and I could tell that you were a leader within the group. So, and you had a lot of uh, influence on on the younger guys as well. Um, and you're only a young kid, but you had a lot of um, respect from the younger guys. You, you wanted to be there, you, no matter what. Um, Look, it, it, it wasn't hard, honestly, and, and that was a great thing about it. It was it was fun, you know what I mean? I just had to, um, just to make sure that, you, you know, we first and foremost, we trained hard. Um, second, we played hard. Third, we, we partied hard, you know? Yeah. And that, that was the sequence. And it was, um, you know, once we got um, to understand how simple rugby league can be, and, and it's not hard, you know, it's not really, rocket science to, to get that winning formula, um, it, it sort of all fell into place. And we had some spin, but, you know, we had the greatest halfback New Zealand scene, so... Let, let's talk about him, right? The greatest halfback and your co-captain. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the first time we had two co-captains uh, in the club's history, and, and what a what a duo you two were. Uh, what made Stacey special as a player, but also as a co-captain, in terms of complementing you guys together? Well, he, he wasn't a big talker, which was great, but he was a great, you know, he was a great leader in his actions um, and you know you you had to you had to earn his respect that's mm. that's what I loved about it. it it was a lot like Alfie Langer you know you had to earn his respect um, you know and what you had to do on the field to earn his respect you know that that, um, that was at the at the forefront so but he was you know just a brilliant player um, you know and he could change a game easily you know and he's like he had everything. Like he had beautiful skills. He had um, he had a great kicking game, and he was fast, you know, he, and uh, and a terrific guy off the um, off the field. Uh, we roomed together yeah, that yep. that first year. He loved a drink, and um, I don't know how you. How, and this is this is one of the things I tried to change. Was um, you know you were, it was it was a bit like the Cowboys when I first went up there. It was like um, you know you you partied you partied when we lost. You, yeah, you know, yeah. we partied. We partied when we won. We partied when we drew. But the worst thing for me was we partied when we lost. Um, so Stacey had come home, you know, at three three o'clock in the morning. He's he's been on the sip, and he went, to, you know, and then bring the whole crowd in. We're, and the boys are playing euchre, and I'm just going, what the hell? <laughs> you know, get me out of here. This is not, you know, how this is not how it should yeah, be. So, yeah. um, you know, we only party when we win. You know, that's 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 oh. the thing. And uh, I tried to change that. That as well. I actually asked Ando the, um, to change my uh, roommate because uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was drinking too much. Uh, just, just on that then, okay? Because you've been amongst some some very good staff, uh, staff that have won um, championships. Ando and Kempi, in my career, probably still they were probably um, they weren't finished products, but no. geez, they were they were good. They complemented each other well. Yeah, it was it was great. Look, we had a really good uh, mix. Um, Ando was a excellent coach I loved him you know and I learned a lot you know you never you never stop learning even as a 32 year old coming over I was you know I always gave you know I always put myself out there to to learn more for me I was a you know he was trying to teach me how to you know carry the ball in in one hand with a grip and I didn't have a grip I had a grip like Tooks so I was always a two-hand carrier um so yeah it's Kempe was a great assistant coach. I loved uh, loved Kempe. Yeah. Talk to me about some of the players that you looked across the room. You saw them in the change room, and I know Stacey's one, uh, and he's the obvious for most. Uh, you just feel like you know what? I feel like we're a better chance of winning today. Oh. some of those guys in the Warriors colours, and why? You look at you know one of the greats, Ali Latiti, who was just um, just out of the box. Clinton Tupi. Um, they were just two special players um, that you just once in a lifetime. Um, players that you you get to play with and you probably don't appreciate that um you know when you're there at the at the time but you, when you look back you just go on some of the things that Ali could do on the footy field just just blew me away um how he carried the ball you know he's, he was a big uh big man he could run like a Gordon Tallis he could step 
he could um, he could do everything on the football field. So I'm going to mention some names, and I just want to get your 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 feel on them, what you liked, um, or even just your instant sort of the feeling. Um, Henry Farfili. Like classic. I was uh, I was um, I was just seeing uh, watching a um, a photo of the 2002 side, and everyone, you know, obviously got their hands on the knees, and and uh, but uh, Henry's he's doing the old eyebrows <laughs> up, he's got the old pouty out going. Mate, he was a classic. Um, I, I used to love watching Hen, Hens come into the into the club um, early mornings because he'd be, you know, he'd be dancing around and <laughs> and that, yeah, he just brings a smile to the face and it, and it really talented player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you didn't like it though when he'd come into dummy half and then you'd get Clinton coming in and they'd do mouse traps. Um, I mean, well, let, let's talk about that because I mean, you would just be on off the top of your head, cut him out. Oh. No more with good mouse traps. Uh, you, you, you'd, you'd be going off, right? And because I've, I've said on the show before, I'd be there uh, at hooker, and uh, Stacey would want the ball. But and hot was the overriding call. Yes. But Clinton would be calling that on every short every side, play. on every play. Every play. Because uh, at times, you know, that that ability you loved, but at times it gave you a headache. Uh, you yeah. remember those moments? One hundred percent. And the, and we you talk about that mouse trap. Generally, a mouse trap is done on on you know you're attacking their line. And I remember this particular day, the, the boys, it was Henry and, and Toops, they'd called a mousetrap uh, on our try line. Yep. So we were actually trying to get out of, um, you know, the red zone. And they've called a mousetrap. And, I, and I've just hit the roof and nearly exploded. Like my, my eyes nearly popped out of my head. That's how, that's how angry I was. I just could not believe that they were um, calling a mousetrap and anything could have happened. Yeah. You know, yep. Anything could have happened. You know, one of them may, may have not picked up that ball. You know, and that's that's the that's the um, risk, I guess you take. But those two were just unbelievable. Francis Malley, oh, one of my favourites. Yeah, just what Franny could do on the on the football field. But his defence was outstanding. He could truly knock guys out. Mm. And and you love that being a being a um, you know a middle player. You, you wanted your wingers to make really good decisions, and um, and when he came in, and that they, they were you could just see, at, you could giggle at some at at some point, because you could see the ball coming, hands are up, and then Frenny, you could just see yeah. he's beelined. And when I asked Ando um, who's who's his favourite or one of his favourite players, Jerry came up straight away. Jerry mm. Seal Seal, yep. uh, memories of him, mate. Tough, yeah. He's one of he's one of the great front rowers that I've ever played with. Um, up there with Shane Webke, and what I loved about Jerry, he knew his job, um, and that's you know. But he he did think he was a five eight every now and again. He thought he could pass the ball, but once he learned um, his role in the team, he was unstoppable. Yeah, and he, he was a big part of that 2002 uh, grand final. It was a big part of. Uh Seventy stitches as well. Oh, uh, so talk, talk us through that story because you've had a few stitches, but uh, mm. normally they're out here at Mount Smart. But how many in total, and which game oh, was it? That particular game, that was a, um, the prelim before the grand final. Uh, we played the Sharks, and I remember going into a tackle. Um, unfortunately, it was with Jerry, and we had a head clash, and just opened me up like a like a watermelon. Yeah. yeah so seventy stitches I had before the grand final. Yeah. Had, it was, and it was really deep. The 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 doctor was likened it to a like a like a car crash. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember there was one time that Mick Watson was putting some stitches in uh, because you were there every game, right? Uh, the, the the joke was you know over a thousand stitches. Well, I had a I had a good relationship with Doc Hanna, and yeah. um, he was great. Look, and uh, one particular time, you know, it was after the game, so I'm I'm laying on the and I'm bleeding and and whatnot. And Mick. Mick must have had a few um, too many beers, um, but uh, he'd come in and I was opened up, and Doc was actually stitching me up. And uh, Mick Mick said uh, to Doc, "You know, can I have a can I have a crack at this?" And yeah. Doc asked me. I said, "Yeah, I don't mind. You know, it can't be any worse than what I've got." So whatever he did, yeah. So he he had a, he put a couple of stitches into my head. So it was funny at the time, yeah. Let's go back to 2002, uh, that run into the grand final. What do you think the key was, the key players or the, the key moments or even just the key themes that helped you in there? It's difficult, um, you know, because I, I don't like talking about it because it's one, you know, I, I played in the 98 and the 2000 grand final and I knew we had the side to win that um, 2002 grand final. If we played our game, uh, no one could beat, you know, the way we played. And uh, unfortunately that, that particular day, and 
you know, and grand finals do that uh, to you sometimes. You know, you, you get a, a bit of, it's a long week. It's a, yeah. an exciting week, but it's a long week. The week before against Cronulla, um, we played the perfect game. Sure. You know what I mean? We, gro we ground, and, and they were touted to, you know, to, to go on and win the comp. And, um, but we were in the grind, we were in the grind, and we beat them in the last five minutes. Yeah. And um, we just weren't prepared, on, unfortunately, on, on that particular day in 2002 to grind for, you know, we, we ground for 40. We missed it. We missed the boat after 60, you know. And uh, they, they, they got us at our one game. I was the 18th man coming off the knee reconstruction to come back for the game. Um, but I was in the ears at half time trying to talk to whoever I could, as we had a number of good um, you know, leaders throughout that team. Yep. Uh, but talk to me, because I, I, I missed it all about the infamous um, uh, stereo that you picked up. And yeah. through, uh, how did it go? Because a lot of people sort of refer to that. They're not too sure. They can't remember. Well, it was vivid for me. I don't know why it came about, but it was um, it was just it was bizarre. And you know what what we needed to hear from the coach was basically you know get back to what got us here. You know, yep. get back in the grind, do this, do that, keep it simple, and we'll get over the top of them at the end. But so what happened then was um, the coach left the room and uh, the football manager. Grab this, grab the tape recorder, and yeah. press play. And it was like, it was a mock commentary of of um, you know us caught the scoring a, a grand final try, and that's basically what it was. It was you know welcome to the two thousand crew two grand final, the Warriors versus the Broncos. So they thought we were going to be playing the Broncos, um, which was just bizarre. Yeah. And then it just went on to this you know mock mock commentary. You know you know. You know, Jerry Siusu takes it up. He offloads to Latini. Latini's through. He's through. He offloads to Jones. Jones, Jones. It's all Jones. Jones to Tupi. Tupi to Cleary. Cle Cleary to Jones. Back to Jones. He's under the post. And it was just, it was just one. It was a moment in time just where I just go, on, you know, this is just ridiculous. Last opportunity. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, and then what did you do? Mate, I, I picked that um, particular um, <laughs> tape recorder up and threw it against the wall. And what did you say? I said, yeah, I, I can't repeat what I said. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't, um, it, was, it wasn't audible, that's for sure. I was yeah, spitting and swearing mm. and yeah, it was just bizarre. There's three new Warriors ambassadors, myself, you and, and Alan Goodenbill. Uh, how does it feel to be a Warriors ambassador? Mate, I, mate, I'm very humbled to be asked, um, you know, back, and I, I've, I've always had a great affiliation. I've, you know, I've always spoke highly of the club uh, because I love my time here. It was, a, you know, the best, out of the 12 years I spent in the top grade, I, you know, uh, those two years were, were very special for me. And um, I made some, you know, lifetime friends. Mm. Um, but, you know, it was very humbling to be asked to, to um, come back and be an ambassador, um, and um, yeah, look, it was. If I can, if I can help out in any way to get this, uh, you know, to get this club to the next level, um, I, I will do that. Well, Campo, once a warrior, always a warrior. And I thank you so much for the impact you've had with this club and what you're still doing now uh, as an ambassador. Thanks, mate. I'm Once Beatham, and I'll see you next week for another episode of Once a Warrior, only here on Sky Sport. Here's Campion. He gets in behind them. Campion. Campion away from a missed tackle. Down inside the 20 metre line. Oh, big hit on Seven Asiba. And oh, he's dumped. And Webke and Campion. Oh, there's no love lost. Wooshka goes himself and he's over. Kevin Campion. And that is a, a crushing tackle by Campion. Yeah, Campion's a man. Terrific ball, Campion. On the spin, on the merry-go-round. And he's manhandled there, Campion leading the charge. Goes to Campion, little kick in behind the line, picked up by Campion, he's over.